All right, I apologize for making a uh, another series so close to the last one, um, but I, I saw another episode of Carl Bau's Creation in the 21st Century, another one with Ian Juby, uh, that I found so deeply offensive that I had to make a response to it right away while it was still fresh in my mind. There's actually another episode starring another creationist as well um, that I'll get to probably pretty pretty quickly. And I don't know how long this one's going to be. Uh, the original one is in three parts, and this is Ian Juby. Uh, it's called Down from the Trees, and it's Ian Juby on human evolution. So you you know you can kind of see why I got a bit excited to see it. I want to share a little bit of uh, interesting Alaska natural history with you guys. Uh, we, in our house, this is gross. I apologize, but we've um, had a problem with cockroaches lately. Now we don't really get cockroaches in Alaska, um, simply because uh, the weather, whatever the conditions, don't favor. They just don't do well here, uh, which is a good thing. Um, especially if you people are afraid of them or people don't like them at all. Um, I think they're kind of disgusting. Uh, but what, what is interesting is what happens is they, they'll, they'll, be, they'll get shipped in with goods. So if you, you know, buy your, you know, go to, I don't know, big stores and purchase, you know, items, um, especially in bulk packaging, sometimes there'll be cockroaches that you didn't see and they'll get loose in your home and they'll, be, they'll, they'll sort of run free for a couple of days and then they'll die off. Um, you know, you can either let them die off on their own, or you can go, you know, on another bug hunt. Uh, they're in, they're not really that. I mean, they're not that bad. I mean, they mostly come out at night, mostly. Um, oh shit! There's one right there. Oh god, I hate those things. Anyhow, so I'm gonna just get to the series here again. He's he, this is him talking about human evolution. So I hope you guys enjoy. I welcome today a dear friend and longtime colleague in research, Professor Ian Juby of Canada. So to repeat from my last series, I really, really resent uh, that Carl Bau feels the need to throw out the term professor, the title of professor, onto Ian Juby. Um, Ian Juby does not have in any capacity any of the academic educational qualifications to, to begin to be a professor. Okay, um, from what I understand, he's got a a certificate of completion from a Votech school. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't take that and call yourself a professor from it. Okay, it's simply not. You're not. He's not qualified to teach at any university at any level. So uh, right there, it, it it's it it bothers me, especially because like I was a professor. Okay, I was a professor for many years um, in the U.S. sense of the term, not in the not in the uh, European sense of the term. As I have not earned my Ph.D. yet, I'm still completing it. I'm still writing my dissertation. Um, and, and if you guys don't know, in um, the United States, the term professor means that you are on a tenure track position at a university um, or college. In Europe, it's that same thing, except where a Ph.D. is required. Before, if you have a master's, you can still teach, but you're a lecturer as opposed to a, a professor. Um, it, it's not as strict in the United States. But either way, Juby doesn't fulfill any of those definitions, even even slightly. So, um, just like when he calls him researcher, okay, what's he researched? Where's his papers? Any peer-reviewed papers? None. Okay, so he's not a researcher. He's, I mean, he's just another creotard out there spreading a bunch of lies and bullshit. And by the way. That reminds me, since I use the bullshit term, uh, anybody who's offended by foul language, you might want to stop the series now because I am not uh, this this one. Uh, just watching it, just cutting the clips up to make this thing, I was sounded like a like a I don't know a Tourette's sufferer. I mean, he just the, he because he's talking about human evolution and he says just the shittiest things about really really good scientists. Um, and again, you know, given his qualifications for anything, uh, he doesn't have the right to. He, 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 I don't think he deserves to even be able to mention these people's names, let alone make fun of them, call them idiots, uh, or whatever. You know, these these things. So that bothers me a lot. So I'm going to be uh, pretty angry during this. Um, anyway, you know, the inference is that uh, we came from lower primates mm -hmm. through the trees and finally jumped down and. Uh, put on a suit and became a PhD. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mr. Bow. We came out of the trees, put on a suit, and gave ourselves a PhD, right? Okay, you now, that's projection. 
Um, some of us are actually earning a PhD, not granting ourselves a PhD from a non-accredited diploma mill that we own. You fucktard. It's disgusting. You're fucking shameable. And recently, just last year, we had, uh, it was a media frenzy. I, I, we're still a little floored by what happened. We opened Canada's first permanent creation museum mm -hmm. in Big Valley, Alberta. I brought a picture along so people could see this little 800 square foot building. It actually had profound implications on the culture in Canada. Okay, now just keep that in mind, okay? The Big Valley Creation Science Museum opened up in Alberta in uh, 2008. And of course, he, as he said, it was a media frenzy. Now let's hear what he has to say about that. It spurned not one, but two national polls. And uh, one of the polls was done by Angus Reid. I brought the numbers along with me. All right. And I'm very grateful they did this. Because in the year 2000, they ran a national poll, a national survey, at the opening of the museum. A poll in 2000? I thought the museum opened up in 2008. Oh, I see. He probably just misspoke. And uh, they'll, they'll correct it further on in the video. Don't worry. And they asked people, do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in creation? Or do you not know? Uh, interestingly, they also answer, asked a third question, do you believe dinosaurs and humans live together? All right. Because that was one of the displays. Now, strangely, 58% believed in evolution. Ironically, the majority also believed dinosaurs and humans live together. Wait, now even the slide now says that the poll was done in 2000. That's a little odd, isn't it? Actually, the reality is that the particular poll that he's talking about did occur in 2008. It did not occur in 2000. Um, so was it just a simple mistake? If so, why did they repeat it? And I'm gonna, I have a, I have a suspicion, and in a bit I will explain why I think the 2000 versus 2008 uh, was was done. Um, but one thing I found it's interesting here is I, I'm not entirely sure what is surprising. 58% um, believe in evolution. Um, and you say also a majority believe in that humans coexist with dinosaurs. That's 42. First, 42% is not a majority. Um, and in fact, if you were to say 58% of people believe in, this is just obviously uh, rough, but 58% of people believe in evolution. Um, what's left over from 100%? 42, isn't it? Is my math incorrect? So the 42% of people who don't accept evolution um, just might be some of those that believe that humans and dinosaurs coexisted? Possible? However, the one uh, nice thing about this was that the young Earth age question was clearly a young Earth creationist position. Okay. Now, 58% believed in evolution, believed we evolved, and 28% believed we, create, we were created. Uh, but 14% weren't sure either. I don't agree at all. I don't believe that the question, did humans and dinosaurs coexist, um, is in, in any way unambiguously a young earth creation position. Now, I, it's true, young earth creationists accept that to be true, but I don't believe that your average person being polled ask that question is going to think, oh, you mean young earth creationism. They're going to be thinking, did humans and dinosaurs coexist, whether it be 6,000 years ago or 2 million years ago or whatever it is. Um, I ha a lot of people that are uneducated about evolution, they generally believe it, even if they don't really understand what it is, um, but also believe in, you know, Flintstone style that humans, cavemen and dinosaurs live together. So uh, it's not a... Um, it, it's not as clear as you're making it out to be. So one year later, Angus Reid ran the exact same poll. And 37% decided they believed in evolution, down from 58%. Incredible. In Alberta, it was the only province in the whole country that actually did a complete reversal of opinion. Not only did, drop, did it drop in opinion from 58% down to 37%, 48% believed in the young, literal young earth creation as told by Genesis. Young earth creation. And yep. that is astounding. It's Congratulations. So, this is interesting to me. So, what, okay. So, there was indeed, as I said, there was a poll done in 2007, published in 2008 by Reed, that looked at Canada's belief in evolution um, in creation. And in that poll, indeed, in Alberta, 58% of, of people in Alberta believe that evolution was true. Um, so in that point, he's reporting statistics absolutely correctly, except for he's messing up the date and saying 2000 instead of 2008, um, 
which I'm I, again I assumed was a simple mis misspeaking. Uh, but then, following that with that, then I would have assumed that when he says the next year, that he meant another read poll done the following year, two thousand and nine. No read poll done in 2009. So let's look again. Oh, there was a read poll done in 2010. That must be what he's talking about. An actual, another read poll, not one year after the museum opened, but three years after the museum opened, actually. Well, it's called two years after the museum opened. Um, but I looked in that read, read poll, and it, it that one didn't support his claim either, because it did show that... Fewer Canadians, fewer Albertans believed in evolution than believed... Actually, fewer Albertans specifically. Canadi the Canadians on other provinces stayed the same. Alberta dropped 7% from 58 to 51% in 2010. So his museum had a positive effect. It made 7% of people in Alberta less educated about science, less able to compete in the world scientific marketplace than the rest of Canada. I guess you deserve a hand for that. I don't, I don't know. Um, but so the question I had was, where did he get this 37%? Where did he get this 21% drop? That's kind of an amazing claim, right? Um, 21%, I mean, he's claiming that 21% decrease in acceptance of evolution thanks to his museum opening up. Um, and so I looked for the, I looked for his thirty seven percent and his numbers aren't in the two thousand and ten poll. There is no two thousand and nine poll. And just for shits and giggles, I thought it'd be funny to uh, to Google creation evolution poll and then the numbers that he reported the thirty seven percent and then the other ones from that just to see if there was any matches with any poll ever done. And it turns out there was a fucking Gallup poll from the United States. Guess what year? 2001. So the date he's reporting on that second figure is the right date, 2001, for a Gallup poll from the United States. He's, however, reporting it as Alberta in 2009. Actually, he's reporting it anyway. But he, I, I'm not. His date mistake, I'm assuming, was, was actually an error. They just carried it through. So this is an it's it's a fascinating claim, isn't it? The, the evidence for creation has been sequestered out of the textbooks in the mainline publications so they assume there is no evidence and here when a little museum arrives with a handful of points of evidence it makes a major statement to the society and the culture of Canada and evolution had no place to hide you fucking douchebags you mean that museum had a profound influence on the culture of Canada based of course on the statistics that you pulled out of your ass and just completely made up right Evolution has no place to hide. You guys. Evolution only, only thrives because it hides behind judges and lawyers. Yes, and it, it must be propped up and defended. Absolutely. Uh, not as empirical science, but as imperial science, mandated <laughs> upon the well people. Well put. Well yes. put. You got us. That's why, that's why the theory of evolution, we... Ha we we don't have any evidence to support it. That's why we do things like deface dinosaur tracks by chiseling in a human footprint. Um, oh, I don't know, carry around a fossilized burrow of a mud shrimp and call it a fossil human finger. You know, discover the no discover Noah's Ark every year um, in some other location in Turkey. Oh, you know, all these things, uh, fossilized hammers. Oh, oh, what about cowboy boot filled with plaster of Paris and pig's bones? You know, that's why we make all these things up, right? Because we don't have any evidence. You guys have all the real evidence. There was a young man in the early 1900s. His father was an African missionary, and he had seen the power of the Christian faith yes. in affecting people's lives for the better in these tri African tribes. Now, when he got older, he, he firmly believed and was convinced he was going to be a missionary. This man would stand on a soapbox in the middle of the streets, preach to the crowds, get people saved. He'd call people up in their bedrooms just to harass them into becoming a Christian. And later on, now, he firmly believed he could be a scientist and a missionary. No, I agree. I think you can Certainly. be a scientist so and a I missionary. I know some, yes. However, by trying to become a scientist, he wound up indoctrinated with the evolutionary faith, the myth of evolution, and he wound up believing it. That man was Louis Leakey. Very incorrect biography, lifted in co almost completely from an article by Russell Griggs in Creation Magazine from 2004 called Missing the Mark. Uh, 